important announcement. Fridays are awesome. And on the heels of a week during which Americans experienced a time change, a US presidential election, and for some people, electsomnia, we've got something a little different for you today. I'm Carl Azus for The World From A To Z, and today's special report centers on the science of sleep. First, how much we need. Doctors say that largely depends on the person and the quality of sleep they're getting. But as far as the US Centers for Disease Control is concerned, children should aim for 9 to 12 hours of sleep every night. Teenagers should be getting 8 to 10 hours, and for adults, it's at least 7 hours nightly. Officials give these guidelines because they say quality sleep is crucial for everything from maintaining healthy weight to keeping our memory sharp. How you feel during the hours you're awake is largely dependent on the amount and quality of sleep you get. Yet, nighttime rest is often the first thing we sacrifice when life gets busy. During the day, your brain produces a compound called adenosine. As the day ticks by, more is produced. Scientists believe adenosine buildup drives our desire for sleep because that's when the body breaks down the compound. We also have an internal body clock that operates on a 24-hour cycle. It's called the circadian rhythm. It tells our body when we feel alert or drowsy, and it's very attuned and dependent on environmental cues, like light. For example, when you wake up in the morning to sunlight, your body knows to produce cortisol, a chemical which promotes energy and alertness. As natural light fades, your body produces melatonin, which makes you drowsy. Whether it's once a week or consistent lack of sleep, ignoring the body's need for rest has consequences. Your brain needs sleep to work properly. It uses this rest time to prepare for the next day, forming new pathways to help you learn and retain information. Studies show sleep improves learning and enhances problem-solving skills, and also allows you to pay attention and make better decisions. Sleep-deprived people tend to have trouble in all these areas and struggle with controlling emotions and behaviors. Physically, the benefits of sleep are huge. To name a few, it's vital in the healing and repair of heart and blood vessels. Skipping Z's can lead to an increased risk of many diseases, heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, and obesity. Lack of sleep also weakens the body's immune system, and you're more likely to have trouble fighting off common infections. It affects appetite, hormones, insulin, growth development, the list goes on. And lack of sleep isn't only harmful on a personal level, it impacts others. Sleep deficiency has played a role in tragic accidents, from falling asleep at the wheel to nuclear reactor meltdowns. Even a personal meltdown affects those around us. Word of knowledge. Which of these terms comes from the Latin word meaning about and day? Vigilance, circumspect, biorhythm, circadian. The answer here relates to the 24-hour cycle we all operate on. It's circadian. Another term that's gotten a lot of attention in recent years is sleep hygiene, creating conditions that experts say are optimal for good sleep. They advise having a regular wind-down time of around half an hour before bed with dimmer lights, maybe a good book, something to help you calm down, but no food and no electronic screens. Make your bed as comfortable as possible with clean sheets and a good pillow. Keep your room cool if you can. Experts say the mid to high 60s is a good sleep temperature and that it should be as quiet and dark as possible. Quality sleep can help you ward off something called sleep inertia. If you get enough Z's but can't kick the morning grogginess, there may be a reason, something known as a heightened state of sleep inertia. It's just what it sounds like. You are awake, but there's a lot of inertia of sleep left over that affects your memory and your mood, your reaction time, and your alertness as you're waking up. Dr. Sanjay Gupta says these effects usually go away after 15 minutes to an hour, but they can also last longer. Gupta says it's not about the quantity of sleep when it comes to this. Instead, it's the quality of those Z's. We've talked about the basics of good sleep hygiene before, like keeping your bedroom dark quiet, cold, and avoiding screens at nighttime. 
But Gupta says there are other lifestyle things that can also affect how a person feels when they wake, including being sedentary. Your body can get used to expending low energy, making you more tired and having inconsistent sleep schedules like staying up late on weekends. He says it can create almost a jet lag effect. Also remember that some people might need more sleep than others. So maybe you need nine hours and other experts suggest trying to go to sleep an hour earlier or waking up an hour later than usual to see if that can also make a difference. I'm Mandy Gaither. Despite the importance of coziness and quietude, noise machines are part of many people's sleep routines and there are different colors or types from white to brown to pink noise. How are they different and how might they work? Once again, here's Michelle Schlaven. People spend about a third of life sleeping, so you'd think we'd all be experts at it. But if you live with a snore, near traffic, or bark-happy dogs, sleep can be elusive. One solution, oddly enough, is to add more noise. There's a growing buzz about white noise as a sleep aid. Millions listen daily, despite limited and conflicting studies. White noise is like a blanket but of sound, one that covers and hides all those irritating little noises that disturb sleep. Sound is made up of waves, much like light. When you combine all the colors of the color spectrum, it creates white light. Similarly, white noise combines all the different frequencies of sound, each delivered with equal and consistent intensity. It creates a low hum, think TV static. Also fans, waves, vacuums, but white noise has some colorful competition these days. Sound can be described with colors based on the distribution of sound. Sleep seekers can choose the lower, soothing rumble of brown noise. Something in between like green or pink noise. That one has researchers at Northwestern University intrigued. The distribution of sound frequencies mirrors the distribution of brainwave frequencies we see on the brainwave tests on a sleep study during slow wave sleep. Slow wave is one stage of sleep, a form of deep sleep, which is crucial to building muscles, bones, tissues, and immune functions. It's when our body self repairs. Experiments are being done using pulses of pink noise to enhance slow waves during deep sleep. But research is lacking, and some studies caution that constant background noises could be harmful. Our brains do need a break from sound, after all. Others say it could hinder language skill development in infants, preventing their brains from learning to decipher between sounds. So research on white and colorful noise continues in the ongoing quest for a better night's sleep. Got a couple mentions today for the birds. First, the Golden Eagles. Hello to Mr. Elson's class. Great to see y'all at Trigo Junior High School in the city of Wakini, Kansas, the Sunflower State. From the Golden State of California, the Raptors are flying high in the city of Roseville. Mrs. Radecki's class is there at Creekview Ranch School. And there's a town in South Carolina named Somerville. That's where Miss Jetty's class and the Cobras are watching from Cane Bay High School. Great to see y'all in the Palmetto State. Here's a question you probably haven't thought about. Can an octopus dream? Scientists in the South American nation of Brazil did a study on this. They found the sea creatures have both active and quiet sleep, like humans, and that during active sleep, an octopus's skin color and texture changes like it does when the mollusk is awake. Could that mean the animal's dreaming of things that cause these skin changes? Maybe. It's hard to know for sure, in part because they don't sleep for very long. An octopus snooze typically runs anywhere from 40 seconds to 7 minutes. If they do dream, the scientists theorized it would look more like a gif or gif, while ours are more like a movie. But supposing an octopus could dream in movies, they'd probably see films like Ochtenheimer, The Old Man in the Sea, The Great Guppy, Titanic, The Hunt for Red Octopus, The Little Mermaid, Doctopus Doolittle, My Octopus Teacher, Jaws the Abyss, Ship of Fools, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and of course every octopus's favorite, Finding Nemo. We're turning in for the day on the world from A to Z. We hope you found our sleep special eye-opening. I'm Carl Azus, and I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs>